Listen to the vibes hosted by Coyote Night. Listen in for some positivity and good times. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I have here Jonesy. Now, you see his face, and I bet you're like me, like, I know this guy. So, let's hear about you. Oh, yeah. Well, you might have seen me uh, doing stand-up comedy in your area at some point. I've done a lot of live shows. You know, I've been doing stand-up comedy for over a decade. I started in Boston, and then I was in New York for 10 years and been in L.A. for about three years or more. Uh, I've done some TV and film stuff. Uh, little little roles here and there, but on some big shows. So, you know, little roles on big shows. That's what I've been able to uh, bring to the table. So I've been on Gotham and Drunk History and Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and Nurse Jackie and uh, Blue Bloods, some of these shows. Uh, usually playing a, um, a degenerate. Yeah, yeah, some sort of... Uh... <laughs> now, uh, you know, whenever I did my intro, I was playing around because, I mean, I, I knew who you were right off the bat. And I was so excited when you agreed to do the show. But get, don't get me wrong, we were watching a movie the other night, and um, it was about the about Waco, uh -huh. and the old Branch Davidian. And yeah, yeah. Saying, who's that lady? And it was Cameron Mannheim. So I'm terrible with names. So that's that's the whole point. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Well, I got an easy name to remember. You know, Jonesy. It's just so it's so easy. So yeah, I'm glad you could remember me, Kyle. <laughs> Yeah, I was so excited because, uh, well, this is, let me tell you all, this is how we actually got hooked up. There is an app, and it's called matchmaker.fm. Now, I had to tell my wife, if you get on my phone, you see matchmaker on there, I'm not looking for another woman. Um, this is all. You know, <laughs> yeah, it looks that way, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, you get the email from matchmaker. Someone, <laughs> someone wants to chat with you on matchmaker. It looks like that. It's very misleading. Exactly. So, you know, I swear, dear, you can open up the emails and look at them yourself, you know. But anyway, this, this whole app, it, uh, it brings people together in the podcast world, people that like doing podcasts, people like being on podcasts. And, and so uh, when I saw his picture, I'm like, okay, I've got to get this guy on my show. I emailed him, and, and for some reason he em emailed me back, so... Yeah, of course I emailed you back. I'm, I'm very, I'm very flattered that you wanted me on your show. Uh, so that's really cool. I discovered this uh, this uh, website only a couple of weeks ago, and I, I've gotten a few invites to be on shows, and and I usually, I usually say yes because right now I have a lot of time on my hands. I'm just sitting at home for the most part, as mo many of us are. And so, right. what a, what a great opportunity while I'm here to kill the time by meeting cool people like you, being on, oh. being on shows, and you know maybe getting some exposure you know and then that's what that's what i'm all about as well I, I host my own podcast and so i like to introduce people to that i don't have guests on my show so i like to be a guest on other people's show if they have guests and um, introduce their audience to my my show which is called weird af news and so yes i'm absolutely grateful for the opportunity to to be on your show uh, this evening I'm, I'm glad that you asked me well thank you i appreciate that we uh, we subscribe to your youtube and if y'all haven't seen it, you need to get on there because it's hilarious. Um, in fact, we shared one of your videos on Facebook the other night. And we were talking about it before we got on. And uh, I'm not going to spoil it. Everybody just has to go look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, on YouTube. My, the channel is called Funny Jones. Yeah, you can, you can see my videos on there. I put, I put a lot of comedy videos with me and my friends just trying to be funny, you know. Uh, and I got, I'm lucky. I got some funny friends. It all—it just is. It's not all just me. I got some funny friends. Uh, I, I'm sure that you've seen on there. Oh yeah. Um, now, do you have a lot of people that when they meet you, they're like, "Okay, make me laugh. Tell me a joke." Do they do that yeah. to you all the time? Yeah, people do that quite a bit uh, when they find out you're a comedian. I uh, and my comedian uh, coworkers, as I call them, uh, complain about this as well. We we find it really annoying. When people do that and you know it's like oh hey oh you're a carpenter oh, build me a birdhouse and it's mm -hmm. just like to be put on the spot like that is, is kind of annoying sometimes i'm not in the mood to be a performer you know and by the way i get paid to do this shit 
Why should I do it for you for free? You know, like, just because you want me to? Like, who are you? You know what I mean? Like, uh, so, yeah, yeah. So I, what I should say is, uh, sure, I'll tell you a joke. You got 20 bucks? Give me 20 bucks, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, a, a lot of us find that annoying. You know, if, if, if you think I'm funny, it's gonna, you're going to laugh during your regular conversation with me. That's how it's going to happen, you know, oh, just yeah. naturally. Like, like it would with any other funny person, you know? Uh, so, yeah. Hopefully, I'm funny uh, talking to you on this interview. Let, let's see, though. I don't know. But I, I'm going to try. I'm going to try, Kyle. <laughs> You'll do it. I know you will. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's almost like um, they're treating you like you're a dog. Hey, roll over. Play dead, you know? Absolutely. Like, dance, monkey, dance. You know, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. It does kind of feel like that, right? You know? Well, you know, I've, I've had um, mediums and psychics on my show, and, and uh -huh. I, first thing I tell them, you know, hey, I'm not going to ask you to do a reading or anything like that for me. This is about you. You know, you tell your story because, you, number one, like I say, you get paid for that, and that's, that's your job. I mean, you know, of course, you know, if you're in a, a setting, you want to tell a joke, you tell a joke, but, you know, you, you shouldn't be approach like that all the time you're a human being so that's that's what we want to get to know is the the human side of you you know tell tell your story i appreciate that that's because you're a reasonable human being yourself so thank you <laughs> <laughs> cool man cool well, what would you what would you like to, to talk about today what can we get into okay did you mention where you were born oh i was born in a, a suburb a suburb of boston massachusetts so boston I'm yeah, I'm a mass hole. Um, at, at, I'm a mass hole at heart, you know. Uh, yeah, I grew up in spent the first 18 years of my life in, in Massachusetts. I had a very thick Boston accent when I moved away, and I, moved, I went to New York, and then uh, spent the 10 years in New York doing stand-up comedy and acting and writing and stuff, try, just trying to establish myself. And then I moved to moved to LA, and. Uh, the, the accent is nearly gone, um, but I can turn it on when I when I need to. Uh, so yeah, I'm still uh, I'm at I'm still very much a Bostonian. I'm very East Coast. Um, I have an East Coast attitude and East Coast vibe in the way that I talk. I, and uh, yeah, I, I like that. I've sort of held on to that. I kind of miss having the Boston accent all the time. It was kind of funny. Uh, everybody I meet would make me repeat shit. You know, hey, could you say that again? What did you? <laughs> what Bacardi? Pot smoking Parliament? What? <laughs> yeah, I'm smoking Parliament in my car. What? What is wrong with that? What's so weird about that? They'd be like, say that again. I'm like, why are you making me repeat shit? Um, but that was, that was why. Now I now I speak like a pretty normal person uh, in general. But uh, yeah, I, I still got an East Coast swag. I like to say. Uh, where are you from originally? <laughs> Myself, I am. I was born in this little town called Baytown, which is just north of Houston, Texas. Oh, wow, cool. I heard Houston is really cool. They got a good comedy scene over there in Houston. I met a comedian from there, and he was really raving about it. Uh, I would love to visit Houston sometime. Yeah, well, Houston is a big joke, let me tell you. Yeah, big joke, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll put it this way, and, and no offense to the Houston listeners, but I, I couldn't wait to move away from there. Really? You know, after spending 40, what, 48 years of my life in the Houston area, uh, we moved up towards Austin, and um, I love it. I love it. The only thing I miss is my family still back that way. How long is the drive to go out, to go back and see your family? Oh, three and a half hours. Oh, no kidding. Okay, so it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a road trip. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the, the, the culture and everything up here, I, it just... It seems better to me, um, especially the music scene. Oh my God, the music scene, and um, and I live literally five minutes from what they call the H E B Center, where they play hockey, and I fell in love with hockey. So oh, all right, and it's it's a pro hockey team. No, they're uh, they're like a kind of like a farm team. Oh yeah, like a minor say. league minor league hockey of some sort. Yeah, you know uh -huh. who the Dallas Stars are. Of course. Okay, this is the Texas Stars. Oh, okay. So, yeah. it's like Let's go it's, Stars! Let's oh, go it's Stars! Oh, like, it's like they're AAA or something. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Oh, okay. That's, oh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Good for you, man. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I like hockey as well. <laughs> so who's your favorite um, Boston, Massachusetts team? Is it like football, baseball, oh, hockey? 
Yeah, I'm crazy about uh, Boston sports. Yeah, I'm really crazy about it. A big Patriots fan, Celtics, Red Sox, Bruins. All my life I've been like that. I've just, my, my family's really into sports. Uh, sports is so important to Bostonians because we just, I don't think we have anything else going on in our lives up there. We're just like, you know, you're stuck indoors all winter. And you, what do you do? You just hunker down in front of the television with your family and, and you watch you know bill belichick and you just pray you know and, and you or you watch the celtics uh so big sports area uh boston man huge diehard boston fan all across the board i love it i love talking about sports i've always been i love playing sports i've been a sports guy all my life i say my, my favorite team though by default is has got to be the patriots just because we've had the most success in my lifetime mm-hmm. So I'm just crazy about the Patriots, um, as most of us are from, from Massachusetts. I hate to be a dick about it, but I mean, I really. <laughs> hey, I just, it is what it is, man. I, I, I really love, in general, NFL football, huge fan. I'll watch any game. I'll watch the Texans. I'll watch, you know, any, any team. I will totally watch NFL football. I'm very hardcore with the NFL. Yeah. And you must be defer, uh, desperate if you watch the Houston Texans, man. Yeah, well, you know they are. They're in our. They're in our conference, so I have to watch them sometimes. Sometimes we face them in the playoffs, and uh, actually, their coach used to be a, a member of our team, a, a part of our staff. Uh, right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I pay attention to the Houston Texans. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, of course, I just love Deshaun Watson. I'll watch him all day long. Please. I mean, the the team is a bit of a dumpster fire, but he is something else, man. I'll watch him all day long. I'm so impressed with that guy. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm I'm not a Texans fan. I'm a Cowboys fan. Cowboys fan, yeah. Yeah, buddy. And you know, I, I was an Oilers fan though. Oh yeah, Warren Moon, huh? Man, Warren Moon, he was the man. Yeah. I'm, I met him, and he is so cool in person. Oh really? Oh, that's dope. Is he in the Hall of Fame? I wonder. I think he is. I think he, he is. is. Yeah, yeah. You know, he had all those great seasons too before he was in the NFL. He was in the CFL, I believe. Uh, he was playing yes. Canadian football. Um, what a what a what a cool guy, man. I can just imagine meeting him must be so, so cool, man. I'd love to meet someone like that, man. Warren Moon, shit. I remember being a kid watching that. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, big NFL fan, man. Huge. Oh, yeah. He, um, he gave my daughter a stuffed animal. Oh, dope. It was so Warren cool. Moon. Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you something crazier. I was walking into Sears and I ran into Earl Campbell. No way. Really? Now that guy, <laughs> that's a legend right there. Earl Campbell. Yeah, that's like O.J. Simpson level right there. Uh, oh, for sure, for sure. Oh, man. Oh, Gail He's Sayers. Man. It's like meeting someone like that. Like, really, true legend. Like, top 10 at their position lifetime, you know? Oh, and, yeah. And all of the NFL. That's so cool. So and, cool. You know, it was a, a, a double pleasure. To, well, I hope that didn't sound wrong. But anyway, he was also uh, University of Texas Longhorn, which is my favorite college team. Oh, oh all right. So, yeah. yeah. Best I've of been, both worlds. I've been to, I've been to, uh, what do you call it? UT? What do you call it? Yeah, UT. Yeah, yeah. I visited one time. I got hired to do a job on that campus for Verizon Wireless. It's the only time I've ever been to Austin. Uh, and I, I got to spend uh, two days around the area on the campus. I got some barbecue. Uh, I was really enjoying that area. I thought it was, oh, yeah, fun time, man. I haven't been back since. That was over 10 years ago. I'd love to go back. I got some fans there, fans of the podcast in, in the area that, that have reached out to me. So I would love to get out there and do a show sometime. If, the, if I'm ever back on stage, who knows how long it's going to take to get back on stage, man. I'm really missing doing stand-up. Live performing, man, and really, that was such a big part of my life, and it's all gone away, all gone away. I mean, I'm doing stuff like this, and, and I like that. I've even done comedy shows on Zoom before and through live stream, but it, it, it's just not quite the same as being in front of a live crowd. And I look forward to doing that. Yeah, but you've been to like several countries doing your show, right? Yeah, yeah. I recently, before all this happened, uh, I was in Asia. So I did shows in Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Japan before all this. Yeah, all this went away. Uh, And when I got back to the U.S. on March 10th, I was able to do one show. And then all my other shows have been canceled since then. yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at. A lot of lost money, lost work. Um, you know, just like anybody else, man. We're all suffering with, with this kind of stuff. How about how about you in your on your um in in your work area of life? Is that has that been affected greatly? Well, myself, um, I had to stop working about a year ago. Uh, I got arthritis like really bad. I mean, uh-huh. just almost debilitating, and um, 
anyway, I've, I've got surgeries coming up that I need to get done. And um, so I've, I was like, you know what? I'm stuck at home. I don't want to just wither away. And so um, I started this podcasting network and it's starting to grow. And uh, actually the, the network itself is only about two months old, uh, but I've kind of perfected my show. Um, I, I just was telling you before, I did nothing but paranormal for the longest time. And I would get to meet people like you and I met Adrian Paul and um, there's this band out of Miami called Elastic Bond and here's these people with great stories and they've got such positivity about them. I'm like, you know, I need to do a show like that. So listen to the vibes was born. Amazing. Yeah. What a great way to spend your time. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, I mean, you can make money at this stuff too. You know, if you, if you do it right, you're building a network. So yeah, who knows where this could go? You know, you could really, it could blow up. You don't know. And I'm still alive, even though my wife is uh, working from home now and she hasn't killed me yet. So that's a positive. Oh, you're still together too. I mean, <laughs> I heard divorces are doubling after this pandemic because people are stuck home with their significant other. They're just grinding on each other's nerves for months at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, uh, you're just like staying at home and you're podcasting, you're doing your Zoom. I mean, but it's still got to be rough for y'all because I got a friend of mine. Um, he's He does stand-up comedy and he goes from club to club to club and he's not doing that now. So, I know things are really tough on him. Uh, yeah. That's it for you guys. Yeah, man, it's been tough as well. Luckily, I have the podcast to go to to keep me busy, and I generate a little bit of income that way. Uh, so I have a project, and the, the podcast is five days a week. So it does, you know, it, every day I'm doing it just about, um, you know, I do daily weird news. So every day I do three weird news stories from around the world. Um, and so it, between recording and editing that, putting it together, and then marketing each one, uh, you know, I got a couple hours of work in front of me every day no matter what and that that feels good I got some friends that don't have anything to do and they're feeling it you know because um, all they do is stand-up comedy they don't do anything else and that's when I'm like hey man start a project start a podcast you can do this on your phone you can make videos you can live stream you can do other things um, I've been fortunate enough because I have weird AF news to keep me going uh, some of my friends are not so not so fortunate uh, gosh so is there like uh, some kind of uh, like a fund or something for these folks that are not able to go do their comedy. I I don't I don't really know. Um, I haven't heard. If there is, I haven't heard of it. No, well, no one's offered me any money, so I <laughs> I should look into this. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I have no idea. I really, really don't. I know the government is like, uh, you know, they've given out their money, and I think you can apply for unemployment if you're a, an independent contractor, which most of us are. Um, so, but I haven't applied for that. I should look into it. Um, so I, I think there's resources out there. I'm just not really familiar with, with what they are. I did get my $1,200 uh, government, whatever they call that, the, the little kiss right in my- uh, The stimulus bank. check, I guess the you call it. Yeah, I got the stimulus <laughs> check. Yeah, I got the stimulus check. But other than that, I, I, I really haven't received anything and um, don't really expect to. And just trying to, just trying to I'm running through some savings and just sort of weather out the storm, you know, uh, just do the best that we can. Well, I was fortunate enough that uh, I built up a pretty good retirement. And so, I mean, I'm only 50, but I'm, I'm living off my retirement now. Oh, wow. At 50, wow, that's pretty cool. You really did it then. Wow. That's impressive. That's very impressive. Yeah. Well, it's 20 some odd years of working for the city. So. Oh, there you go. All right. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, you're going to get through this for sure. For sure. Well, the plan is to try to learn a new vocation. And I mean, even at my age, it's not impossible. You know, I would like to learn more about computers and things like that. And so, you know, but this isn't about me. It's about you. All right. All right. Yes. So talk more about you. What's your plans? Oh, what are my plans? My, my plans is uh, I'm going to start... Uh, at least two more podcasts uh, I got the concept for. Uh, I'm going to begin them uh, shortly. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, I've been doing some writing as well. I, I just wrote an article that kind of went a little viral about my time in Asia during the coronavirus 
outbreak. I was in each country and saw the beginning of it. Mm-hmm. You know, this was between, I was in Singapore on January 19th. Um, the first case was on the 22nd. Uh, and then the next country that I went to was Taiwan. At the time that I went there, they only had one case. Uh, or, t- yeah, I think they only had one case. So I, I, was at, I was in these countries at the very beginning, and I saw the uh, sort of the professional approach that they took. Very, they took it very seriously from the very get-go, and, uh, and, and I witnessed that, you know. I, I mean, I'm in a country like Taiwan that uh, before they had even one death, they were, they were requiring you to have a mask to go in some stores. They were taking your temperature to, before you went into a store. They really questioned me at the airport when I entered. They made me fill out a, quest- a health questionnaire uh, and that sort of thing. So these countries took it very, very seriously. But when I arrived in the U.S., it was the exact opposite. It was like the U.S. just didn't give a shit, um, you know. Uh, and so I wrote an article about that. It was kind of I had an inside perspective on watching all of that happen as I was doing my comedy tour. And when I got back to L.A. and I published that, and it went kind of viral. You can find it on my Instagram page, which is at Funny Jones. Uh, there's a link in the bio, and it's also you can find it on my Facebook page as well, which is uh, Comedian Jonesy. And on Twitter too, I posted it at Funny Jones. So. Yeah, so I've been spending a little bit more time uh, writing as well. I think uh, I think I have a gift for it. So uh, I, I, you know, and, and it's something I'd like to do more of. And this article really got popular online. I, I couldn't believe it, and it was shared over a hundred times on Facebook. And I just people were reaching out to me and commenting, and I was like, "Whoa, this is pretty cool." So I think I'm going to do more of that. I think I got a gift for writing. I, I really do. It's, this is a pretty funny. I mean, it, it's an article that's really like, "Whoa, it's shocking," but I managed to squeeze some comedy into it as well. It's a little humorous. And you can learn a lot, man. And and it's yeah, you can really learn a lot from that. Um, I, I recommend your viewers uh, to take a look at that. It gives a good perspective on the coronavirus and how each country handled it, and then what what we were doing and how messed up that is because it wasn't right. It was very unprepared. Yeah. So uh, your writing is it just mainly comedy, or do you like to do more serious stuff as well? I really like comedy. Yeah, I really, really like comedy. So uh, even when I did do a serious piece, like this was a very serious piece, I managed to put a lot of jokes in there. Uh, yeah, because I just really love to go for the, I love to be silly and goofy at the end of the day. So uh, <laughs> yeah, comedy is it for me, man. I've always been obsessed with making people laugh my whole life. I just, I don't know why. I, I think, I don't know, maybe early divorce, you know, when you're a kid and you're just like, oh, not as many people were paying attention to me. And so I was always trying to get, look at me, hey, let me, let me, how do I get your attention? And I just have always tried to do that with comedy my whole life. And that's why I tried stand up comedy. And that's why I, I try to uh, make uh, all of my content usually has a little comedy flair to it. Because um, mm-hmm. I just, I really, that's just something that uh, is just kind of woven into my DNA or something. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's it's so me. It's so me to try to go for the laugh, even if it's shocking. I just want to I want to get that laugh, you know. Oh yeah, uh, there's a friend of mine. He does the same thing. I mean, he'll take some of the some stuff that shouldn't be funny at all, but somehow he makes you laugh through it. And he does a bit about his mom having cancer, and I'm like, how do you joke about that? But he makes oh, it funny wow. at the end. Yeah, you know, and those kinds of jokes are very difficult to approach because, uh, you know, cancer is no joke, right? No one wants to laugh at someone having cancer, especially when you say, hey, my mom's got it. How do you make that funny? That's, it's very skillful to do that. So that's very impressive. You know, I try to tell jokes like that, too. And it's, it can be a struggle sometimes to get people to laugh at those kind of morbid topics. But I think in comedy, you should be able to talk about anything and everything. Um, it's not what you talk about, it's how you talk about it, you know, and you can really, if you're very good, you can make almost anything funny, even death, you know, I mean, you can make anything funny if you're good, you know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That whole bit about his mom dying and then, you know, how he incorporated what she said about it, I'm not going to spoil it, but (laughs) you just, you have to hear it. It's actually on one of my podcasts. Yeah, that sounds great, and that's, I mean, that's a difficult topic to to get laughs at on for sure for sure so that's very very impressive i try to do the same thing it's very challenging um you know i mean stand-up comedy for me has been a uh something uh, you know just to speak about it as a craft uh 
like anything, there are certain, there are levels to it. So in the beginning, I just tried to get up on stage and get off without dying, you know, like, oh my goodness. And, <laughs> and then I started to get a couple laughs, right? And then, so then, then my goal was to get on stage and get some laughs. I didn't care how I got laughs. I'll talk about my penis, anything. I just want, <laughs> I just want to get a laugh. I would say things that weren't true. I would say things that weren't all that interesting. It's just, if they got a laugh, I would just do it and get off. And then after a while, I said, well, now I know how to get a laugh. What else can I do? And then I started to get more truthful about myself, started getting, um, you know, biographical, sharing some of my opinions, sharing more of my life, letting you get a glimpse of who I am as a person. Um, so I started doing that and, and try to get laughs with that, you know, mm -hmm. and then so that's another level. And then lately I've been on in this the last few years, I've been in a stage where I'm I'm trying to get people to laugh at some things that are that I think are pretty peculiar and funny, but no one else does, and and that's been challenging as well. But so there's levels of it, you know. You you start off with basic stuff, get a laugh, get off stage, and you're like, now can I get a laugh doing this? Can I get a laugh doing this? And like your friend, can I get them to laugh at my mom dying of cancer? What a big challenge, you know. But as an artist, I gotta, uh, you know, people like me and your your comedian friend. I think we like to be challenged, you know? Um, and if I'm not challenged, I'll stop. I'm, I'll stop doing it. You know, I really oh, need yeah. to have a carrot dangling in front of me, you know? So I really love to challenge myself. And I think that makes you grow as an artist, you know? I, I really, really do. It's made me have to develop skills on stage that I never had before, you know? Uh, so for me, I'm always trying to get better and better. And it seems to me the way that I'm getting better is by being more personal, by yeah. share, sharing more talking about things that are a little shocking and very, sometimes very sad, you know, uh, like your friend does. And I think you grow as an artist that way uh, if you're a comedian. Um, and I, I just want to get better and better. And I wish I could get on stage because I got a lot to talk about, you know, and, and I'm, I need a place to, to do it. So I can't wait for the, the live entertainment to be part of my life again. Well, just look at all that material that you have saved up. You know, they're going to have to say, hey, it's, your time's up, man. Get off the stage. I know, right? It's going to be all of that. I mean, I, I came back to the United States, like, ready to talk about my trip in Asia. Like, I couldn't wait, you know? I did one show, and then I was like, boom, then no more. Uh, so, yeah, I have a lot to say about my My experience was very unique, being over there and experiencing the, the outbreak of the virus. That was fascinating, and so I got a lot to say about it, and I can't wait. Now, when you take your approach to comedy, and I know the, the friends that I do have that are into it, they uh, they just really don't care what people think. They just say what they got to say, and you either laugh or you don't. They don't care. Yeah. I mean, is that the way you kind of look at it as well? Yeah, I do. Uh, I will uh, I will say what I think, uh, for sure. For sure, I will say, state my opinion, and I'll and I'll put it out there, and I'll and I'll see. And I have a lot of opinions about everything. We all have opinions. They're like assholes, right? So I got I got a lot of opinions, and and then I'll choose like between i don't know let's say i'll choose when i'm working on new jokes i'll choose a few of them that i think are weird and unique uh and that maybe i'm the only one that thinks that way like you know like i do a joke about how amber alerts are stupid right now no one ever, no one thinks amber alerts are stupid you you know when you, you say such a thing and people are shocked you know they think that that's wrong how dare you make fun of amber alerts but i i come with the approach that i don't think these have ever worked these amber alerts and I think it's really a dumb, a dumb situation, uh, a dumb approach, because it, what it does is create a situation where regular citizens are going to get involved in a kidnapping, which is a bad idea, by the way. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want any part of a kidnapping ring, okay? Uh, just keep me away. Maybe if it's my own daughter, sure, I'll go get a gun and I'll get her back like I'm Liam Neeson. But in general, I want to stay away from kidnapping rings uh, in general. So I think the Amber Alert... Can get some can get a regular citizen involved in a crime, and they don't you know they don't know what they're getting into. So I have a whole bit about that. Now normally you'd be crazy to say such things on stage. People were offended at first when I would say these things. How could you make fun of Amber Alerts? They're saving lives. Well, then by the end of the joke, you would be like you'd see my point. Uh, you know, so that's an example of how I would choose a point of view or an opinion that most people don't have, and then I'll work with it on stage. A lot of times when I first do it, not a lot of laughs, but. Uh, I can see after four or five times if I got something and if I do think I have something I'll stick with it and some of them some of them I will develop into a full joke others I have to drop because they're just too maybe I don't have the skill right now or maybe my opinion is so crazy that no one's ever gonna be on board with it you know like right. I do a bit about um, uh, what did I do I do a bit about 
uh, how there's nothing wrong with dating a woman with a penis, you know? And like, uh, <laughs> why, why, why not? Why not date a woman with a penis? I've dated women with a lot, with the qualities that are way more annoying than a dick, way more annoying, <laughs> you know? I mean, God, some very annoying women, like, you know, uh, so that's a, that's a very tough thing to sell. Uh, and, and, I, and I'm still struggling with it. I, I will still do that bit. Uh, and I'll notice, uh, depending on the, on the city I'm in, uh, yeah. some people might be offended. You know, if I'm in a city, if I'm in a crowd and there's um, some, I, I've done that joke and there's been a man in a dress in the crowd. And it was a small crowd and it was in, of course, Hollywood, of course, where do men wear dresses? Fucking Hollywood. Uh, you, you'll see a bunch of them. You'll see a bunch of them. This isn't my crowd, by the way. They don't like what I do. Uh, and they, this, this person certainly didn't like what I did in that show. And other people in the crowd l were looking at the person, the guy, and it was clearly a guy in a dress. And they weren't laughing at my joke there. They weren't on board with it. And it was because of that dynamic. There was a, mm. there was a person who was a trans or like, we didn't know, you don't know. It looks like a guy in a dress, but we don't, it probably identifies as a she, but probably has a penis. And so it can be a struggle, that, that particular joke. But um, as I get more skillful, I can, I can kind of sell those things and make them more palatable for audiences. My dream is to be able to talk about anything and get anybody to laugh about it. And, and with that joke, I hope someday I can have it in, in, in the right place where it's not too offensive where people who might be a trans person, they could actually laugh at it. Right now, that's not the case, but I'm, I'm, I've been working on it and I want to get it to that place. I don't want to offend anybody. I'm right. not, I, I am not that kind of person at, at all. And anybody who knows me and talks to me knows that that is not me at all. And I, and I would never intentionally uh, insult uh, somebody, uh, you know, in my joke. Um, my, my point of view comes from an innocent place. But we live in a very PC culture, as you know, Kyle. Oh my you God, do, yes. You do this show, you've done the podcast, so you probably have gotten some comments before, some blowback that, you know, the public can be very, very uh, easily offended. And uh, those people, I don't think, are paying attention, a lot of them. If some oh, of them yeah. deserve to be offended, I get it. But then there's a lot of them who just aren't paying attention to the message. They just, they're, 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 they're cherry picking something out of it. They're taking it out of context. And mm -hmm. so that's a challenge for comedians. And that's a challenge for podcasters like us as well. And it's, it's a challenge for creators. Um, how do you deal with that? You know, um, I try not to address it too much. Um, I, I try to just do what I do. And if you don't, if you, if you got offended, it's because you didn't understand my message completely. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we were always taught, you have to learn how to laugh at yourself. Perfect. And, you know, I grew up in the seventies. We had shows like all in the family and the Jeffersons and, you know, they were trying to break that that whole prejudice barrier by making fun of each other. You know, you could say honky and the N-word and all that stuff on TV, and you got to laugh because people were trying to break free of that. But now yeah. everybody is so uptight, you can't joke about anything. You know, um, my, both of my boys are gay, okay? And my my youngest son came over, and I can joke with him about anything. And I know m when I got remarried, my wife was shocked when I did this. But my son comes over. I just got through barbecuing. Here I got all this meat in there. I'm like, hey, go in and dig in and get something to eat. And he goes, Dad, I don't eat meat. And he goes, I said, well, that's not what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, you know, well, you know, and you you the fact that you can joke with your son shows a healthy relationship. So exactly. At, at the end point. of the day, at the end of the day, these uh, what's going on in the culture where people getting offended shows you it's an unhealthy relationship, you know, and we should be able to talk more comfortably about these things and even laugh about them. And that way we can foster a healthy relationship. Shouldn't we have a healthy relationship with exactly. people, who are, people who have who are different from us? Uh, I want to have a healthy relationship with anybody who's different from me. I have no I have no prejudices and whatever you are, wherever you're from, your point of view, your sexual orientation, whatever, I, I want to have a healthy relationship. And I think part of a healthy relationship is us being able to kind of joke around and talk about our differences. What's wrong with that? You know, it's at the point now though, like I can't even, if I talk about another uh, race, for instance, uh, I don't, I'm, whether I'm insulting them or not, apparently as a, as a white individual, 
I'm not even allowed to talk about other races in mm. any form whatsoever when I'm on stage in stand up. And I don't, I don't do it anymore because I saw how much of a struggle it was for me to even talk about it. Not insulting or anything, just the fact that I would be talking about it. They look, they, they, they tell me I'm not qualified. They tell me that stay in your lane. Well, how am I not qualified? I'm a human being, okay? Exactly. I have experienced diversity. We all have. I've been roommates with an African American. I've been roommates with an Italian. I've been roommates with a gay person. I have had these experiences in my life, and why can't I talk about them? You know, I feel like I should be able to, but currently, because, uh, because I am not that, they really want me to put my mic down and not allow me to talk about such things. And I, I've pivoted and I don't do that. Instead, I try to keep it on myself, biographical. You know, I talk about my point of view and my experiences. I talk about my nut allergy and what it's like to be short. And I talk about my time in a cover band and, um, this, and my travels and this kind of stuff. Um, I keep it on me. But there are things I want to talk about and they just seem to be off the menu these days. And I hope that at some point in the future, we can break through this and all just be comfortable talking about whatever, you know, and, and trust one another. And this is how relationships grow anyways. You know, when you're in a, you can use your example as you and your lady. If you're not able to talk about everything, that relationship ain't gonna work, brother. You know that. Exactly. Now imagine with the rest of humanity, we should all be able to be able to talk about our differences, you know, uh, our cultural attitudes, like all this should be able to be talked about and it'll create stronger bonds, you know, uh, between cultures, between countries, between nations, uh, you know, it goes, exactly. it goes on and on and on and on. If, if we can all get comfortable like that. And I think it starts with this little PC thing that we got, we're not allowed to talk about this. Not, and, and I think that needs to really, we need to grow from that. We need to break free from that. And I mean, the comedians are trying it, but I mean, we're, we're getting in trouble online all the time, man, all the time. Oh yeah. I can only imagine. Well, it's like we've taken steps backwards when, yeah. You know, the days of George Carlin and Richard Pryor and, you know, all these guys, Cheech and Chong, you know, they made fun of everybody and everything. And it was it was like we were moving forward, but now we've gotten to that time where, you know, oh my God, you're a white guy, you're not allowed to talk about anything. Yeah, you're right. We were we were getting somewhere with those comedians that you mentioned, Pryor and George Carlin, uh, man, you know what, and Lenny Bruce before them. Thank you. And, and it's all, you're right. We've definitely taken a, a step back. Um, and I don't know who's going to lead us to the promised land when this comes. I have some, I'm fans of some comedians that really don't give a shit and will say whatever they want. Um, it's easy for them because their bills are paid. Uh, but for the rest of us, it can be hard. You know, you can lose work. You know, imagine like, I got to be careful what I say because I may be like blackballed and, and, and I get no work because I'm the guy that said this about women or something, you know, and even whether I meant, like whether I meant it as a as a something coming from somewhere mean or not, if you take anything out of context, you could look at it like it's mean, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and that could happen to me, you know, all my work could go away. I could be one of these people who are vilified online, you know, and told, you know, you cannot work my comedy club or we will not have you at our at our college or whatever, whatever. This this seems to happen a lot in the stand up comedy world lately. Mm -hmm. And and who's gonna be the people that break through that? You know, I, I hope I hope some people do, you know. I hope people like you know, like Joe Rogan does his thing, man, and I and and he's oh, one yeah. of these guys that can break through it. And it's if not for guys like that, uh, you know, I, I don't know where we would be, but we have a long way to go. I think I think still, maybe not even in my lifetime. I don't, I have no idea. With, you know, the future is, it's wide open. We who knows? I mean, I thought you know Eddie Murphy came on the scene, and it was that continuation of what you know Richard Pryor and all them guys had done. And so you thought that it was going to stay wide open. He was making fun of gays. He was making fun of white people. He was making fun of black people, Mexican people. It didn't matter. And everybody laughed. And now I don't think you could do the same thing. I don't I, think so either. I don't think so either. I mean, I mean look what happened to Kevin Hart. Perfect example. And he was at the top. He's at the top, right? He mm -hmm. can't, I mean, even he can't say what he wants about everybody. That's kind of weird. You know, like he can't, if he can't talk about anything, anything he wants to, if he's limited, I mean, that's weird. And by the way, you don't want to limit these people because they're gifts to our culture. You know, exactly. they're special They're special people. They have a special point of view and a brain that's like really weird and, 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 and entertaining as hell, man. I want these people to go crazy on stage. I want them to talk about whatever they want. I'm not going to like all of it, but I'll like some of it. And that's enough for me. And if we don't let them do their thing, then 
we, you know, how are we going to get the best out of them? You know, I, I, I just don't get it, man. You're yeah. buying a ticket. Don't you want the best? You want the best. Exactly. You know, and it's, and it's like music, man. Like, we're not, why should, why should we have to like everything that everybody does, man? My mother, I, I always use this, this example. My mother doesn't like the band Tool. I love Tool. And, you know, Tool's very specific, right? Not everybody like Tool. No. Right? I get that. You know, they're very, very unique. And not everybody digs, digs that. I absolutely love them. I don't meet a lot of people that like them. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't have to. Not everybody should like them. Music and comedy should be the same thing. Not everybody got to like it. You might, you may like a, you know, like urban comedy, but you may not like, uh, you know, uh, female comics, maybe. Maybe you don't like hipster, sort of alt comedy, or maybe you don't like physical comedy. Maybe you don't like impressions. Maybe you like uh, more of the Louis C.K. types, or maybe you like the Dave Chappelle types. It's, there's so many different kinds. Why should we level the playing field and say, no, 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 comedy should be this, and it should be palatable for everybody. Everybody should be able to enjoy it. All the families, all ages, all backgrounds. Well, you know, not all backgrounds like Tool. Not all backgrounds like hip hop music, but we seem to be okay with that. Well, you know, comedy should be looked at like music in that way, I think, and give it a break, man, you know? And not, it's not for not everybody's for everybody, you know. You, if That's you don't true. like horror, you don't like horror movies. You don't go to the horror movie. You don't go to the horror movie and then walk down to the front desk and go, "You better take that horror movie out of that theater." <laughs> I was offended, you know, exactly. which is kind of which was what happens sometimes to, to comedians in comedy. Uh, and comedy. And I don't think that's right. It's 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 a it's a they're all different flavors, man. They're not for everybody. And just because you don't like a flavor doesn't mean you should have it removed from the fucking menu. Exactly. That's just, that's just how I feel. Okay, so you like vanilla ice cream, you like chocolate ice cream, you like strawberry ice cream. W what difference does it make? Do I'm not going to have it taken out of the grocery store. And exactly. You would be you'd be called crazy. You would be called crazy. If you were to walk, if you were offended by a movie in a cinema, like it was a horror movie, and you walked down to that front desk, you said, that horror movie was scary. You have to take that down. They would just laugh you out of the damn place. And everybody mm -hmm. else would too. We'd all laugh at you. Ha ha. You knew it's rated R, you dipshit. You went in there to see a horror movie. <laughs> like, you're now telling us to take it out? Like, no one would allow that behavior. They would call it crazy. But um, it seems like it, when it comes to comedy, that's happening. I, I think it's very problematic, man. And I think it's a barrier to real, true expression. And, and, it, and it can prevent uh, artists from really developing because of, because of fear, I think. And I see my friends deal with it, too. And I think some of us are holding back. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we should hold back because the world is a crazy fucked up place and we should all be talking about it. And we should talk about it because that's how you heal from it. You know, you talk about it just like anything, just like your bad relationship with your son or your daughter or your dog or your wife. You know, you talk about things. That's how you heal. We got a lot of issues in this culture, man. Culture's falling apart. You know, shit is crazy. You know, a lot of us live in fear. Well, how do you get through that? Well, comedy is very effective. So why shouldn't comedians be able to talk about any damn thing they want? We are going to help the culture heal, culture heal, and help the culture deal with some of the craziness that we witness on a day-to-day -day basis. My God, watch yeah. mainstream news. Don't you feel like you're living in some sort of nightmare that was invented by a mad scientist? I do. I, and, and so comedians are one of the only artists that can get on the mic and in real time start talking about these issues and get us all talking about it. And, and, and that can heal and that can help us all work through these problems. And we need it now more than ever, man, because the shit oh, is yeah. crazy. And I think comedians need to be allowed to flourish and do whatever they want. And, and let's and, and let's not be so um, easily offended. You know, if there's something that you don't like on TV, what do you do? You change the channel like a reasonable Thank you. purpose. You know, Thank you. Oh, and, you know, I don't force anybody to listen to my podcast, Weird AF News. And I can't believe how many reviews I got where people are slamming my podcast. And I'm like, man, I didn't make you wa listen to it. You found it on your own. You know, you decided. And by the way, this shit is free. It's free. You know, right. the kind of. So we live in a culture where there's a lot of people like that, I think, you know, they, 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 would, they would take the time to, to try and take your little thing that you're doing down because they didn't like it. And by the way, I never spoon fed it to you or made you listen to the damn thing in the first place. So what kind of nut are you to do that to me? I mean, you, you have issues, you have issues in your life. Mm -hmm. And those people unfortunately also have a keyboard and so they're out there and they're making some of us feel like shit about what they're doing. And I just, I just can't stand it, man, you know? 
Yeah, wow, that was quite a that was quite a rant, Kyle. Hey, Sorry, that's bro. okay, man. That's that's what this is for. You know, hey, I stuck my hand in a fire and it and it, it burned and I didn't like it, but I stuck my hand back in it again. Yeah, exactly. That's that's, that's the way people think. You know. Yeah, it's crazy to me. You know, I used to get into like political type discussions on Facebook, and oh, I got to too. the. I, I finally said, you know what? That that's it. It's not even worth it. And you've got extreme people on the right and the left. I don't care who you're rooting for. And it's like if you say one thing and somebody's got an opposite op opinion, they all just jump on you and they try to tear you apart. And it's, you know, I, I don't even bother. You know, I have my beliefs. I keep them to myself. And if it really and truly, if you ever want to make it in what I do and or are trying to do. I just stay out of politics altogether. But, That's a very smart approach. Very but, smart approach. But at the same time, you know, we have this right in this country to speak our minds and say what we want to say and be able to say it. But yep. it's not like that anymore. It's not like that at all because the threat of the threat of you losing your job is there, your audience or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and and everybody in entertainment is is scared. You know, I know I know people who. Um, before they were gonna be on a TV show, while they're taping, they were told to go and erase their Twitter history and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, and, 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 uh, or the, the company will go back and look through their posts. Yep. Before, they, before they agree to let them on, on their show, they'll look at their posts to make sure they didn't say anything crazy. And it's like, really? And, and, they would, and if they found something that was 10 years old, it doesn't matter if it's 10 years old, they'll, they'll be like, I'm sorry, we can't have you on our show. <laughs> you said something about the Jews back in 2007. And you're like, well, first of all, I am Jewish. Second of all, I was 14. They're like, we don't care. You know, like, w there's no second chances now, all right? Oh, um, yeah. And they're not, people aren't reasonable enough to see what, what that is from an objective standpoint. They're immediately offended. They don't care why it was said, where it came from, if there's any malice within it whatsoever, they don't give a damn. They, they want to know, if this is taken out of context, will people be offended by it? Hmm, yes, they will be offended by it, and that's all they care about. And you know what, things taken out of context, yeah, pretty easy to get offended, well, I'm just saying. You know, you know, this is crazy that you mentioned that because I put up a post, I think it was like three years ago, and it was an anti-Nazi post. But because it had, Nazi. The, okay. it, it had the word Nazi in it, so I ah. got I got banned from doing any live uh, shows on Facebook for I think the next couple months. Oh, and that's crazy! So, so they have a they have a, a, a like a bot or something that scrolls and it looks for keywords like that trigger words. So if you had mentioned Nazi or Hitler or something, they probably grab that and they and they don't care if you said that it sucks. They're like uh, they don't care if you said Hitler sucks. They're like you said Hitler. You are going to be banned, like so. That's what's going on too. So they don't even take the time to nope. look into it. Like, does is this person really saying something that's really mean and wrong? They don't even care, man. I mean, what is that all about? And what does that what does that mean about uh, the right to free speech? I mean, that you, that doesn't exist anymore. You tell me exactly, exactly. And it's so frustrating for creators like you and me. You know, at the end of the day, I'm lucky on my weird AF news. You know, I really say whatever I want. And I'm gonna tell you something. Um, I don't have a huge audience, it's a small audience, but they appreciate that. I can't tell you how many messages I get from fans that say, hey man, I like that you just, um, you speak your mind and you're not afraid to do that because a lot of people aren't doing that. And, and, and it struck me and I said, you know, uh, there is something about this. I'm providing a voice for people who want it in the culture because it, you can't find it. You can't find it because people are too afraid to say it. So. I express my opinion on there, whatever it might be. And, and sometimes it's about uh, whatever the case is, whatever the story I'm doing. It could be about the LGBT community. It could be about PC culture. I've ripped apart PETA in there. I rip apart people who bring emotional support animals on airplanes and stuff. I mean, I just rip into people all the time on there and say what I really think. And uh, I've done it because the, I, I don't get paid for, to do the podcast or at the time I started, I wasn't getting paid. And I just, I, if I'm doing it for me, I'm just going to have fun with it and speak my mind. And that's what I started doing. And people appreciated that because they're not getting enough of that because people are afraid to do that. So exactly. I think if you, if you can find a little place where you can say what you want safely, 
uh, you'll find a small crowd of people out there in the culture who really need that. And they'll, they'll, they'll come to you, you know, more so than the haters. I got a lot of people who support, support me on there and they say that, how much they appreciate how I'm not afraid. They say this, not afraid to speak your mind because we live in a time where people, creators, are afraid to speak their mind. I don't blame them. If I'm Kevin Hart, I can't speak my mind. Otherwise, my millions go away, right? They exactly. do. My job, my jobs go away. He's stuck in prison because of this, really, where he can't say what he wants to say. I don't have that. I have the luxury right now of being broke and not famous. I can say whatever the hell I want. And I notice when I do that, um, get a few haters, of course, um, but uh, uh, more so people are reaching out to me saying, I appreciate you taking, putting your neck on the line and actually saying something out there, having an opinion and not giving a shit what people think about it. Yeah. You know? Well, it's like uh, this, that guy Travis I was telling you about earlier, the comedian. Okay, I, I started seeing his stuff on Facebook and it was, it was stuff that, you know, I, I liked or I was for, but he'd made fun of it, and it was just funny. And that's why I had him on the show. It's like, dude, I don't care if we agree. Your political beliefs could be far this way and mine far this way, but you're just funny. And so that's why I had him. Come on the show, man. You say your piece, and you know, if people don't like it, that's, that's just too bad. But yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's great, man. That's great, and I'm sure he appreciated that. It's like, I, I appreciate you bringing me on here. Giving us a platform to express ourselves is just great, right. man. It's just great. Well, I tell you what, I wish I could have you on a little bit longer, but it's time's up. <laughs> time's up. Well, Kyle, this was this was great, man. Uh, I, I really, it's really nice to meet you, and uh, I'm glad you gave me this opportunity to express myself and introduce myself to your audience. And I hope that they'll take the time to check out Weird AF News. Uh, I've been doing a lot of weird stories about the virus lately, man. The weirdest stories I can find. Uh, this week I'll be doing a, a special episode about the conspiracy theories that are behind the virus because there's a lot of them and some of them are really weird and funny. So yeah, there'll be a whole episode on conspiracy theories behind the virus. And uh, so yeah, check out Weird AF News on any of your podcast catchers. I will try to remember to post that whenever. Oh yeah, I... please do. I'll send you a link to it, buddy. Yes, please send me yeah, the link. Yeah, sure. So whenever I start posting for the show, um, I will put that up with it and. We'll go with it. Yeah, and, uh, and, and of course, uh, send me the link to this when it's live, and I will share it to, uh, on my Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and uh, you know everything. I'll, I'll share it out there because I, this was a great time. I think people need to hear what we have to say on here because I think what we said on here is very important. It needs to be listened. It is. It really is. It really is. Hell yeah, especially if you're a creator, you know? You, you're absolutely gonna, necessary. Are you going to tell those TV people about me? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> Whenever TV comes back, when? <laughs> cool, cool. Well, thank you, Kyle. Thank you for having me, man. Hey, I man. Really appreciate it. I appreciate you, and, and thanks, everybody, for, for listening. And um, we'll catch you on the next show. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favourite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network and on Instagram at The Vibes Broadcast. Broadcast.